and Triangle Inequality Theorem. This is 5.5b. We're up to 10 previous videos for Chapter 5 that are in the Geometry Playlist. So we talked about this a little bit at the end of the last video. A triangle is formed by three segments, but not every set of three segments can form a triangle. So here I've got all these different segments, and I've got this one down here, he's hiding. And I could take this six centimeter segment and this six centimeter segment and this 7.5, and I can move them around and make a triangle where they meet. See the triangle inside? See that? I can also take the 10.5 and the 11 centimeter one, put them together, and take the 18 centimeter one and line them up so that they make a triangle. See? We line up their corners, just move it in. If they don't meet, we can just make these angles smaller, right? So I was able to make two triangles, but what happens if I take this one away and try putting the 18 centimeter in its place? Well, this six, six centimeter one and this six centimeter one are not gonna meet each other. And no matter how low I put them to make the angle smaller, there's always gonna be a gap. Well, there's a reason for that. There's a certain relationship that must exist among the lengths of three segments in order for them to be a triangle. So we had the six centimeter plus six centimeter, that made 12 centimeters, and 12 centimeters is greater than 7.5 centimeters. That's why that worked. And we had the 10.5 centimeter and the 11 centimeter. When we add them together, we get 21.5 centimeters, which is greater than 18, and that's why this one worked. These two lengths were longer than that one, and these two lengths were longer than that one. But when I did this, well, 6 plus 6 is 12. That's not longer than 18, and that's why these could not form a triangle. Okay? So that brings us to our theorem. It's the triangle inequality theorem. And it says the sum of any two side lengths of a triangle is greater than the third side length. So we've got this triangle ABC, and... If we add AB, this one, and BC, the orange one, it'll be greater than the blue one, AC. And if we add the blue one to the orange one, that'll be greater than the black one. And if we add the blue one and the black one, that's greater than the orange one, isn't it? So can a triangle have sides with lengths 4, 6.5, 11? Well, we can add the 4 to the 6.5 and get 10.5. That's not greater than 11. So no. By the triangle inequality theorem, a triangle can't have these side lengths. To show that three lengths can't be the side lengths of a triangle, we only need to show that one of the three inequalities is false. And in this case, it was the first one. We did the AB plus the BC is not e greater than the AC, see? Or not greater than the AC. That's why it didn't work. So this first one was not true, that was enough to say that it can't be the side lengths of a triangle, okay? Can a triangle have sides with lengths 3, 5, 7? Well, we can add the 3 and 5, get an 8, 8 is greater than 7, yes. We can add the 3 and 7, that's, gr that's 10, it's greater than 5, so that's a yes. And we can add the 5 plus the 7, that's a 12, that's greater than 3, that's a yes. And the sum of each pair of lengths is greater than the third, it's a triangle. Can a triangle have sides with lengths n plus 5, n squared, and 2n, when n equals 3? So the first thing we do is we evaluate each expression when n equals 3. So the n plus 5 would be 3 plus 5. That would be an 8. The n squared would be 3 squared. That would be a 9. And the 2n would be 2 times 3. That would be a 6. So now we have an 8, a 9, and a 6. And we can do 8 plus 9. That's 17, that's greater than 6, so that's a yes. 8 plus 6 is a 14, that's greater than 9, that's a yes. And 9 plus 6, that's 15, that's greater than 8, so that's a yes. So the sum of each pair of lengths is greater than the third length. It's a triangle. Now here's finding side lengths. The length of two sides of a triangle are 6 centimeters and 11 centimeters. Find the range of possible lengths for the third side. 
So it's not going to be an exact, it's going to be a range of numbers, okay? So we're going to let S represent the length of the third side, and then we're going to apply the triangle inequality theorem. So here's the third side, S plus 6 is greater than 11. Well, we subtract 6 from both sides of the inequality, and we get S is greater than 5. Then we do S plus 11 is greater than 6. We subtract 11 from each side and get S is greater than negative 5. Then we do 6 plus 11 is greater than S. That's 17 is greater than S. That works. And we combine the inequalities into one compound inequality. Okay? Now, if you have trouble doing that, turning these inequalities into a compound inequality. You can write the inequality separately and then use a number line to combine them. That might help your eyes more, okay? And remember, when we have two inequality signs, we start reading in the middle. So S is greater than 5 and less than 17. And the length of the third side is greater than 5 centimeters and less than 17 centimeters. And then remember, if you graph this, if it's a filled-in dot, that means it includes the number. If it's an open dot, that means it doesn't include it. Now, because S is greater than 5, it doesn't include 5, so it's open. And it's less than 17, so it can't be 17, so that's open. So here's the range of what it could be, okay? Now take a look at this. We have a bicycle frame, and for those Ridley super fans out there. These are not exact measurements for a Ridley bike. I just used them for my example, okay? So we've got two triangles, this one and this one. So we've got ABD and we've got BCD, all right? And the five steel tubes of this bike, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Those are the five steel tubes of the bike frame. They form two triangles. We need to list the five tubes in order from shortest to longest. Well, what we can do is order the sides in each triangle separately using the given measurements. So, the first one, triangle ABD, this one, we know the measure of angle ABD, this one right here that's missing. We can see that's 64 and that's 66, but that one's missing. Well, because of the triangle sum theorem, the whole thing needs to total 180 degrees inside, right? So we can do 180 minus 64 plus 66, and we'll know that that is 50 degrees. So because that's 50 degrees, that's bigger at 64, that's bigger at 66. This is the smallest angle, so that's the smallest side, AD. Okay, that's the shortest side. For this one, we're missing this angle measure. So we can do the same thing. We can do 180 minus 56 plus 50, and we find out that that's 74. So that means because this is the biggest angle, that's got to be the biggest length, right? And we have 50 degrees and 56, so because that's 50, that means BD is the shortest length for this triangle, okay? So now we've got AD is the shortest one for this triangle, and BD is the shortest one for that triangle, okay? In triangle ABD, this one, number one, the order in length is AD, then BD, this one that shares with that triangle. That's going to be our second big longest one and then we have AB so we have BD is greater than AD and less than AB in this triangle BCD the order is BD first then BC then CD so BC this one up here this 54.1 centimeters is greater than BD and less than CD now since section segment AB this one right here is 50.8 centimeters and BC is 54.1 centimeters, it's also true that AB is less than BC. And we can see here that AD is, is first in line and then BD, see? So we know that's smaller than BD, so that would come before it, wouldn't it? So our order for both triangles would be AD, then BD, then AB, then BC, then CD, okay? If that confuses you, you should have watched the last video, and you can just click on the description and find it in the geometry playlist. It's 5.5a, okay? So this map shows the approximate distances from San Antonio to Mason and from San Antonio to Austin in Texas. So let's take a look at this. So it goes from San Antonio to Austin and San Antonio to Mason. This is 111 miles. This is 78 miles, 
okay? So we don't have any distance for this blue one from Mason to Austin. So what is the range of distances from Mason to Austin? So we're gonna let D, this blue D, be the distance for the blue line for the distance from Mason to Austin. And using the triangle inequality theorem, we can say D plus 111 is greater than 78 and subtract 111 from each side, we get D is greater than negative 33. We can do D plus 78 is greater than 111 and subtract 78 from each side and say D is greater than 33. And we can add the 111 and 78 and get 189 is greater than D, okay? And we combine the inequalities. We have D is greater than 33 and less than 189. So the distance from Mason to Austin is greater than 33 miles and less than 189 miles, okay? So remember, for an indirect proof, we begin by assuming the opposite of the desired conclusion. So it's the opposite of the proof statement. Then we write the proof until we reach a contradiction. We have to state all cases. And if a paragraph proof seems difficult, we can write a two-column proof first, then change it into a paragraph proof, okay? Now, if the conclusion is an inequality, the proof will probably use the triangle inequality theorem. Our next lesson is about the hinge theorem and the converse of the hinge theorem. It's 5.6. So, you know what you can do is take pieces of spaghetti and break them into different lengths and see if you can make a triangle and see what happens if two smaller lengths are used with a longer length to see if you can do it, okay? or pieces of paper, or construction paper, whatever, all right? So keep trying, I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of anybody who watches math videos on YouTube. It says a lot about you. So keep trying, keep going, and I'll see you next time. Hit that like button, bye.